how to how to download and extract and, and create a startup disk for Supergrub 2. Okay, let's get started. Now normally, you know, Grub would be installed when you install most distros. I know Pop has System D and that makes it really hard to and I don't know, I haven't worked with it myself, but people have had in my in my a pop group have had problems with it picking up uh, windows and whatnot and I have I've tried to put grub onto my pop local drive but I don't think I had I, I gave it an attempt but I don't know if it worked that well probably it didn't work because I, I wasn't able to do it I didn't really pursue it very well because I ran into some roadblocks initially so the reason the reason for for this for this program here, the Super Grub 2, is that you want to be able to put it on a system that has pop so that when you boot your system you'll have a bootloader that will give you the option to choose between whatever you've got on there. More than likely pop will be on there because this is going to be a kind of, it's going to like kind of bypass the system D bootloader which people have had problems with it detecting the wind if they have another um, OS on there and they want a dual boot so this comes into play here since if, if you can't figure out how to install grub through your pop installation do this now the, I did it and I was able to figure out that okay I was able to extract it and create the disk and, and boot to it but it seemed like it's only and I went through this video here and I looked at some of the documentation and whatnot it really seems like it's something that you can't install locally and just and just you know start up your computer and then it gives you the grub screen that you're all familiar with and you can choose between pop or whatever or the distro or windows or whatever it seems like you can only run it from the USB drive as far as I could figure out which is a little bit of a hassle you have to have the USB drive in there but if you have pop and and it's not seeing uh, your other window, your other Windows installation, or your other uh, distros that are on there. Give this a shot. This might work for you. Of course, like I said, you have to run it from. Once you boot to the USB drive, you have to leave it in. But it'll give you a Grub. It'll give you Grub capability. But it won't install it locally. You have to run it from the drive only. But if, if I can figure out, it's going to work pretty good, I think. I haven't tested on mine. I only have one uh, OS on on my pop machine, so I can't really see if it's gonna see all the other OSs that are on there. But it detected the pop, and I was able to boot pop from 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 their grub screen. Okay, so this is this could this could be a good workaround. This could be a good solution. Maybe not the best solution, but certainly for some system D systems, this could be a good solution if you can't. Oh, uh, you know, install Grub too, and you know, and use Grub the way we would traditionally would use Grub. Okay, so the program is uh, Super Grub Two Disk. You can see the uh, the address up here. And you go to the Download tab, and there's some. Uh, there's it kind of tells you what uh, what it's going to provide, what kind of capabilities it's going to provide once you boot it up. Documentation and everything. Um, I went. There's this video here that I looked at. It's kind of old and the scratchy. It was, it was like made during Ubuntu 14, so it was some years ago, and the, the audio is not very good, and the guy has an accent. I watched it essentially to see if it, if, if there was really a way that you could install it, but this pretty much confirmed my um, my uh, my understanding that this is not something you install. That you run it from the USB drive. And that, like I said, that could be an inconvenience. You, you have a you know a USB drive that you have to break out and always leave in and take you know you know plug it in and plug it out whenever you want to dual boot. But on a pop system, it can come in handy because you know it'll give you your Windows and uh, your other distros that are installed on your on your system. Okay, so we'll go to the download here, download tab here, and we'll scroll down. Now I want the USB bootable image, and I read that you know it'll work on UEFI systems and also legacy BIOS. 
my laptop with uh, Papa has happens to have legacy BIOS, so it'll work in its 64-bit. So yeah, this this will work for me. So I, I went and downloaded. It's an image.zip file. Go ahead and click on that, and you can see the countdown here, which is kind of the way Sorge Forge usually works, I think. And then here it comes. Here comes the download. Okay, it's a zip file. It's completed downloading. So we can go ahead and, and kill that. Minimize that. We're done with the, the web page pretty much. Go to the terminal. Now I'm gonna make first thing I'm gonna do is make a directory on my home in my home folder that I'm gonna extract out the contents to. I'll call it super grub you can call it whatever you want as long as you know what you as long as you know how to keep track of it okay so we created that and then we will cd into the download folder right here okay clear that and then we'll do an ls and we'll see everything that's in here lsa you can see the one I just did right now was the one, and of course I have, I already did it before, so I have the, the zip here. That's the original one I did. This is the one we just did right now. So you can see right here, supergrub2, image.zip. Okay, so we know the file we want to, the archive we want to work with is in the download folder. Okay, and we created the, um, the supergrub folder on the home, on the home, in the home folder that we're going to extract these contents out to. Now, I went ahead and used the um, the GUI extractor in my Ubuntu here. I went into application, utilities, and to the archive manager here. Pop that open. Okay. Come over here. Uh, we're going to open the archive. We're not going to create one. We're going to open one. So we go open, and then we go to that... Uh, the zip file here, select that, open on that, and then, okay, select that here again, and then when I click the extract, then I could uh, direct it to wherever I want it to be extracted to, the contents. So we'll click on that. Actually, I got to, I think I have to, or this is where I want it to go to, actually. So I'm going to go to home, and I'm going to go to the, f the folder that I made, the super grub, and I'm going to extract it to there. And it, you see it's extracting the files to that super grub folder I made. Okay, so successful there. You can close that, close that, and then there's this um, startup disk creator that you can find here in the application right here. And that's good enough. I didn't really, I didn't have to, you know, do Rufus or Etcher or uh, Unet Booten or DD or whatever. This this worked fine for me. So you can see right there, and I have it here. I've already got it pinned. Okay, so I want this is this is the source that I want to. This is the source. This will be the target. So that's not the source that I want. So we'll go other, and we'll go to that. Um, We'll go to, to the to the folder that it was extracted to, and it's not a CD image. I, I downloaded the the um, the USB image, so that'll be a disk image. So we go down and we choose that disk image. Come up here, select it again. It's like an ISO, I, I suppose, like an ISO. It was a uh, an archived ISO, even though it says dot im. IMG. I have to look up if ISO and IMG are the same. They work essentially. It's the same. You work with it the same way. Okay. So then we're going to go ahead and, and get that's that's going to be our our new um, source. And then we, uh, here's the targets already here. Sixteen a sixteen gig of uh, USB flash drive. Okay. I've already got stuff on there. Let's see if it just goes ahead and just writes over it. Yeah. There's stuff on there. Do you want to write over it? Yes, I do. And then I gotta authenticate here. 
and it's going to rewrite over that that uh, that image that I already have on there. Almost there, twenty percent. Bear with me, please. Writing disk image, 50% almost. Okay, another, what, 30 seconds maybe? Once we're done with this step, that's pretty much about it. Then I, I can't really record what I do as far as when I boot it up. But once it's done, just, e you know, um, safely eject the USB drive plug it into whatever system where your pop is set your boot order to USB and just boot it and then you'll get it'll boot okay see here we go it's complete okay we're done it's pretty much about it and on Ubuntu you can come down here and like safely eject it or whatever so that when you pull it out you won't get any corruption okay so then you know uh, my pop is on a different machine other than this one so I I ejected it. I can pull it out physically from from the USB drive port. Plug it into my plug it into my uh, my ThinkPad laptop where my pop installation is. I have the boot order already set to USB, and then it boots, and uh, it, it's pretty much it's um, keyboard. You know, there's no mouse. It's keyboard driven with your arrows and whatnot, and It'll give you a group. There'll, there'll be some some screens you have to scroll up and down. The, the there'll be the top one where it says you know I forgot what it said exactly, but one of the, the two top ones is where you want to enter on, and it'll give you a grub screen essentially. And you just use your arrows and and look for whatever's on there. That hopefully it'll, it'll detect everything that's on there. Your Windows, your your pop, and whatever other distros that are on your system, and it should detect them. And then you uh, arrow up and arrow up and down, just like if it was a grub screen that was you know installed locally. Except you're running it from the USB drive. Now, if I'm wrong and you can install it locally, please say so. But otherwise, I, as far as I'm concerned, as far as I understand, you can only run it from the USB drive. So yeah, it's a little bit of a kind of a kind of a workaround. It's not the best solution, but um, it certainly be it'll it'll certainly bypass any system D problems. Now, probably if you can figure out, like I said, I didn't spend too much time trying to actually install Grub 2 on my local system. That would be the best, I think. That way you don't have to, you know, dilly-dally around with the USB drive. But um, in lieu of that, this is, this is I think this will be a good, uh, a good solution to dual booting with POP. So you can bypass some of that System D um, headache that, we, that, we, that people have had to deal with. Like I said, let me know if, um, if there's a way to install it locally. As far as I can tell, you have to run it from the USB drive. Okay, so that's it. This is a good solution, I think. Okay, thank you.